DIYs by Dar. And what is this thing? This is actually a mini mat cutter. So I'm going to take you through and show you how to use one of these if you like to do canvas prints or portraits. Here is my piece of cardboard that was in the frame that I picked. It wasn't even a picture at all. So this is the frame. There was a lot of damage on it. It was wooden. So I have it all repaired and I am going to get that painted. Here is a brand new piece of mat, 16 by 20. It does have a crank up at the corner, but that's what happens when you have these types of things shipped to you, which is not always fun. Here is the canvas print that I want to put over the top of this heavy cardboard. I have the lines drawn on it and I have it square in the middle, so hopefully everything will turn out right. Now, this cutter, I mean, you can spend thousands of dollars on mat cutters, but for what I need to use it, if this worked for me, this was going to be great. So this is the Logan 2000 from Amazon, around $43. And it, come, it does come with its own blades. And I'm not sure if you can use any blade, but it has a hole in the center uh, which helps for adjusting the blade with the small little knob it has right there in the middle. And you push down on that and the blade will come through the bottom plate. And for a basic mat, they're about 1.8 millimeters thick. And at the lowest setting, that's what you get. And right here in the middle on the side, there's a line. And that is what you need to line up with your line to make sure you are cutting everything square. You press down on that and then you just push it and it, it is supposed to give you a nice beveled cut. So we're gonna try this. Here's my line, I have it drawn on there. And you need to take and secure your mat and I used a metal ruler and just clamped it to each end of my table. Make sure you have something under or you are going to cut through and cut whatever you're working on. You line your line up, you press down, and then you're going to take and press forward. And when you get to your top, go very carefully and stop right at your intersecting line so your cutter will stop cutting. I'm going to turn this around and get the second side done and secure my straight edge. And make sure when you are cutting, make sure you secure your straight edge uh, with your hand. Make sure you're holding it down as well so it doesn't move. I have my line lined up. I'm ready to go. Holding my straight edge. Then I'm going to go ahead and press down with my thumb and push the cutter forward doesn't take much it seems to go pretty smoothly and then carefully look and stop at my top intersecting line so i don't cut into the area i don't want to cut into so i have two cuts done and i can see it's releasing pretty good so we'll get the rest of this done. Here's a closer view. You can see the line that I've drawn on there and I'm lining the line on the device right up with it. Pressing down and then pushing forward. So this time when I take this out, hopefully the middle part will just fall away and it does and I have my mat. I can use this other piece, put it in a safe place so it doesn't get bent or dirty for some 5x7s, 8x10. I'm going to try this mat on the uh, old cardboard and see if it lines up with my penciled lines. And it looks pretty good. It's lining up square. And I am ready to take and put my canvas on this old piece of cardboard. And I'm using my permanent stick glue and go ahead and just cover the whole piece where you want your canvas to lay. 
I'm going to start at the bottom and line up my corners with what I have drawn out and slowly unroll it, pressing slightly as I go upward and hopefully when I get to the top, I'm still squared up with the two top corners. And it's looking good, so I am ready to press this down a bit firmer to make it stick and I will use a roller or a brayer. Do not roll hard, just go lightly because you don't want to damage your canvas. I tried the mat over the top just to make sure it went over the whole entire canvas and it does. So, so far I'm, I'm feeling pretty successful at this point. Let's get this frame finished while the uh, picture is drying and I am priming it and I only needed one coat of a stain blocking and odor blocking primer and I did both sides of course when that was dry I used some silk all-in-one paint in the color deep sea and this did require two coats just for a thorough coverage on both sides While my frame's drying, I'm going to take my acrylic gel medium in gloss and I am going to start to go over the top of this canvas as if I had painted it myself with this gel because the gel will dry clear and leave that texture that looks like someone actually had painted this. Now this is a process that um, original artists will use on their own prints and then they sign them and they can get a little bit more money for their prints. Take and follow the lines of what's there um, swirl it around and make sure you get it entirely covered. And this process doesn't really take that long. It took me under 10 minutes to do this whole print. And I'm right now down at that bottom corner. I just have a little bit to complete and you can see the difference in the color from that gel where I'm putting it on just in little swirls all around it. So when this is completed, I will take and let this dry, usually overnight. Now that it's dry, um, I have some double-sided tape and I need something to stick that mat to the top of this canvas. So I'm going to stick that double-sided tape down there and I left a little corner up on the end so when I uh, start to rip that off it makes it a whole lot easier because this tape is extremely sticky and it is hard to kind of take and get your nail and rough that end up so you have the other side to pull but you pull that off and then it is ready for you to put your mat down so square your mat up Slowly work your way down to the bottom and press it down all the way around. And this worked really well. I'm ready to put this back together. Everything's dry. Make sure you clean your glass thoroughly. Um, both sides, but definitely the side that is against the canvas because you're going to get it locked down. And then if you have dirt in there, it's a pain to take it apart. I will even take a glass cloth and do one more clean with it before um, I go ahead and start to put my canvas back in. And here I made a mistake. I put the hanging hardware on and I should have waited. You'll see why. Um, this is the HM515, and it is a point setter for canvases and pictures. It works very much like a, a stapler. You just butt the end up, and then you squeeze it, and your little point 
will come out. And there you can see it. Those are those little tabs. Sometimes you can press them down, sometimes you can't. Um, I decided to use the double-sided tape on the back of my paper to put on, and that was my second mistake. And I'm back to my first one. Um, I had to then put my paper underneath the hardware instead of putting it all the way up and then putting the hardware on the top. But these sticky two-sided double tapes don't work well when you get to this point. I guess it didn't want to stick to that back of that um, painted portion. But I put some more glue on it and it came out okay. And here is our finished canvas. I love the picture itself. It's very unique. I love the color of the frame with the picture and the white mat. Just really makes it pop. Looks really nice. And I will sell this in my booth for $32. So thanks for hanging with me and if you stay tuned I am going to give you a sneak peek at the big project I'm working on, which is a furniture flip. And it's another one of them really crazy things that has DOS clay molds and some resin molds, depending on how I wanted to bend it. And I'm not sure when I'll get that piece completed, but you will be the first to see it when I get it done. And I want to thank you for watching and please like and subscribe. See you next Sunday at 7.